Hi guys, Johnny Reader here, and today we're going to be making our very own Bluetooth speaker. Let's get started. Start by splitting your blue tack into five equal pieces, which will be used for each component of the build. But chances are you'll have just enough left over to put a poster up on your wall. If you look closely at the holder for the driver, you'll notice a slanted edge and we want to face that back towards the rear of the driver. So in this shot here, that slanted edge is facing up towards us and the camera. You can now take that assembly and you want to place the wider side of the holder in first and then fold it down into its slot. If your screwdriver isn't magnetic, you can use some trusty old blue tack to hold your screw in place whilst you line it up with its slot. No need to over tighten, just tighten it until the screw stops and that will be absolutely fine. So what you should be looking for is the blue tack seeping out between the crack as you tighten down each of the four screws and you want that to happen evenly around the entire perimeter of that holder. At this point it's a good idea to take a knife or a flathead screwdriver and just trim away some of that excess blue tack. So what you want to do is be cutting it away as opposed to peeling it out from the slot. With the passive radiators however, you want to take the excess blue tack and push it in towards the slot to create a nice airtight seal. Avoid covering these two holes with the blue tack as they let the charging light LEDs shine through the case. Small 
simple trick here for inserting the charging board, just take a flathead screwdriver in this slot here and push it forwards and you'll watch it slide down into place. Whichever way the red cable faces on your switch is the direction you will flick the switch to turn it on. So if the red cable is at the top, you will flick the switch up to turn it on. When it comes to installing the battery, make sure you slide it in from the side as opposed to trying to push it in, otherwise you might damage one of the clips. What you want to do here is mark one of the speakers so that when you come to put the sleeve on, you know which side is which. So we're just going to mark the left driver here with a permanent marker. This is where your marking comes into play. So we place that left speaker where it says SPKL and then place the right speaker in the upper remaining slot. At this point, you're ready to place your middle partition into the inner housing. What you want to do is make sure that sleeve is caught all the way around. So as you push the partition in, it's going to pull the sleeve nice and tight. There is actually a built-in switch which we're going to bypass so you want that to be in the off position and that's where we're up towards the top as shown here. 
So once you've checked it all works and turns on fine, you're ready to slide that inner housing into the outer casing. First, just make sure you're not gonna snag any cables as you push it in, and then just gently pull it all the way to the rear of the enclosure. Also make sure that the connectors aren't gonna be touching the passive radiators, as that will cause some buzzing when you come to try it out. Providing you haven't caught any cables or the capacitor on the charging board which you can bend out the way, you should have a nice even lip around the entire perimeter. Before screwing it together, it's worth checking the charging board works, so you should have a red LED when it is charging and a blue LED when it's completely finished. Okay, so you've completely made your speaker now and what you want to do is go ahead and test everything's working okay. So I use an app called Sonic to create a specific frequency. I find what works best is to play a tone at full volume at 140 hertz and then listen out for any kind of unexpected buzzing or hissing coming from the speaker. Here we are playing that 140 hertz tone and by process of elimination I found that there's some buzzing coming from the on off switch and I know that because as I cover it with my finger the buzzing stops. So we need to go back inside the speaker and fix that seal. So take out the four screws holding it together and then a small trick to getting the inner housing out is to take a small allen key which fits into the slot where the screw was and just gently push it to push the inner housing out slightly and then go to the other side and do the exact same thing. So you'll see here as I push that allen key just pops out slightly. <laughs> Eventually you get to this point and then you can just use your fingers again, going side to side, just prying it bit by bit and then carefully removing it at the end so as not to pull on any cables. Now you can go ahead and go to town on that problem area. So you can see here I've completely covered that switch in blue tack and that should have hopefully fixed our buzzing problem. All that's left to do now is to put everything back together, ready for another test. Running that test again, the only thing we can hear is the 140 hertz tone we are hoping to hear with no buzzing, so we're all good.
did it. You made your very own Bluetooth speaker, or at least I hope you did, and you didn't get lost somewhere in the middle of the video, and now you've just got a mishmash of cables, and you're cursing at me through the screen, but assuming it all went well, I hope you had lots of fun making it. And if you do want to get one of these kits for yourselves, you can get them from my website. It's jcracoustics.co.uk. I'll put a link down below in the description. There's three different colors to choose from. Or, I mean, I guess you could get all three if you wanted and that would be cool as well. But either way, I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, please like, rate and subscribe. And I hope that you enjoy making your kits. But until then, Keep designing, keep making, and keep on creating.